Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures review of this 2023 Honda CRV. All right, this thing is the CRV Hybrid All-Wheel Drive Sport Touring. So only six names there. It has a two liter four cylinder engine and not the 1.5 liter turbo. Combined horsepower between the hybrid drive and the gasoline engine is 204 horsepower and 247 foot pounds of torque. So not too bad actually for for the size and at freeway speeds it it's not super fast around town and stuff it seems to do quite well but once you get up on the freeway it doesn't do as well the exterior is this canyon river blue i really like the color it's a little dark outside right now you can see the sun is just coming up out there and so once you get the sunlight on it it really reflects and shines nice and then of course it rained just a little bit last night so now it's got those dust spots all over it has black wheels there's a lot of blacked out features on this thing the interior is black so the black wheels match that these are 19s i believe I'm trying to find the right there 235 55 r19s continental cross contact tires so 19 inch wheels and has an okay amount of sidewall it's not crazy thin but a smaller wheel would give it a little more sidewall here on the back, you have all those badges. So CRV, hybrid, all wheel drive, sport, touring. So this one kind of is the, the uh, top end package. And of course, being such, it comes with lots and lots of different features. And yeah, let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. All right, there is your two liter inline four, naturally aspirated, non-turbo. So the 1.5 liter has a turbo. The two liter with the hybrid system is non-turbo. I like that idea in many ways. It simplifies the system a little bit, but you still have the high voltage. And of course, it is a CVT transmission. And I believe this one is the eCVT style. So it's not using regular old uh, belts or chains and using a planetary gear system quite a cool mechanism you should if you don't know how that works and you're interested in that kind of stuff be sure to check it out because it is a pretty neat cvt style looks like it's fairly easy to work on the gas engine at least and you know get around to the components that's why i like the basic of the two liter four cylinder also a little tiny battery here comparatively because you have the hybrid system which is powering most things so you just have a, a small battery here it says group bci 51 and i don't see the the cranking amps on it 310 so very very few cranking amps but there you go the high voltage lithium ion battery just in front of the rear wheels uh behind the rear seat it says there so the air intake is here but of course it's coming in from the grill first and then going up and into there it, it's nice having it high up there are a lot of them where it's grabbing air from down low but having it up higher and it's even sealed all around the bottom so if you're driving through a little bit of water or something you should be okay here inside it's really it's quite nicely appointed so you can see there's a couple of blanks there i'm not sure what the other options are as the memory seat settings Window lock there, of course, power mirrors, all that kind of fun stuff. On the steering wheel, you've got a few different settings and I wanna see if it will, yeah, so you can go through and change these settings. Driver attention, navigation, you can put up, you know, whatever on this. Anyway, all wheel drive torque distribution is the one I'll leave it on. And then over here, we have the power distribution that shows whether the engine's powering the wheels or the battery or whatever. And 
yeah, anyway, lots of different settings and features there. And you can control that from here to change the radio stations. You can press that and let go real quick. It goes to your presets, press and hold, and it will change one station at a time. Volume control, uh, lane keep assist, all that kind of stuff. The adaptive cruise control on this side. And all right, so drive modes, hill descent control, parking brake, and the brake hold. So when you're at a stoplight, you can let off the brake and it'll hold it for you until you push the gas. It does have four drive modes, sport, normal, economy, and snow mode. I've been driving mostly in economy. Right here, you have the power button for the wireless charger. And the wireless charger does work quite well. There you go, gotta press and hold for a while for it to turn on and off, yeah. That way you don't accidentally bump it with something you're throwing in there. Yeah, a couple of USBs here, USB-C, USB-A, 12 volt outlet for you know standard vehicle 12 volt. Two cup holders there, my lunch in here. And yeah, other than that, I mean, it's pretty basic. You do have the sunroof up here and it does, of course, open the cover with the power, but to close the cover, you have to do that manually. The mirror is just uh, auto dimming. It doesn't have the home link built into the mirror. Uh, as far as I know, there's no other, there are no other buttons for the home link in this particular vehicle. It does have a Bose audio system and it sounds okay. It's not top tier, but it, I mean, it sounds pretty good. And we'll go over that on the Monroney a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look in the second row. One thing I failed to mention, the stitching on the seats, so you get this nice orange stitching, contrast stitching. I actually like the way it looks quite a bit, and it's around in a few other places, like here on the steering wheel, and on the shift boot, a few places like that, and then of course that carries through to the second row seats, and here, two cup holders. Again, just like the front, it's fairly basic back here, so a couple cup holders there in the door, or storage cubbies, and these seats do recline somehow. Where is, you can see they're offset right there. So there you go. You can recline them just pulling that lever. And then of course they'll fold flat and whatever for the cargo floor. Just have vents here and two USB-Cs. There's no separate climate control zone for the rear. The front, you get one for driver, one for the passenger, but in the rear, you do not. One center light there, handle, hanger hook. Pretty standard stuff. And then that seat belt is attached, but you can fold the seats down and it's not completely flat. You see you have a bump right there that curves up. Part of that might be the batteries are here under the seats, which I don't know. I think they might actually be back here in the cargo area. So I think the batteries are probably actually under here and don't mind my kids love playing in the cars that we get. So anyway, I think the battery's underneath that because that is a little bit harder to pull out. You know, it doesn't come out like the normal CRVs with the you know, cargo stuff under their spare tire and all that. Spare tire or repair kit rather, tire repair kit is here. It has the goo and the air compressor and then the emergency fuel fill. So if you have to fill up from a fuel can rather than a fuel station, you need that so you can reach down and open the double flaps because it is capless. And I'm not sure what that is. Interesting. A couple of hooks back here. Down here in the corner next to the unicorn is a metal tie down. And then these are actually metal too, I believe. Feels like they are. They actually feel fairly sturdy. A lot of times those are plastic and don't feel so strong. So grocery hooks on either side. And yeah, decent tie downs course power and you can hold it down so if you want it here push and hold that and it will only open to that height so if your garage is low or whatever you have that option zero to 60 three two one go 
We are in normal mode, just flat footing it, no brake torquing. Sixty. Let's see if we have a better value this time around. Nine point three one, and that seems more correct. Cruising on the freeway in the 2023 CRV Touring Sport. I'm not sure why it's two separate trim levels, packages, or whatever. Anyway, it's quite nice actually. It's a little bit noisier in here. It's not gonna be as quiet as your higher end luxury vehicles. It's nothing crazy loud, nothing over the top, but just maybe not as quiet as some other new ones. And Ride's actually really good. So this vehicle overall feels very nimble. It, it's very precise in the steering and direct and drives really quite well. Um, getting good gas mileage right now too, 29.4, and I'm actually probably getting better than that because it, I had to need stoplights for quite a bit before getting on the freeway. I do like the power meter there. It tells you what's going on with, you know, where's the power going? Where's it being added or taken from? And this is an all-wheel drive system, so it shows power going to all four wheels. I don't know if it actually is going to all four wheels right now or not, but that's what it's showing. I would expect it to be more front-wheel drive oriented, and I think there is another power meter in here that shows that, but I, I'm not sure where that is, so. Um, yeah, the tachometer as it were is simply a power usage so it says percent power down there or 27 30 percent power usage right now and that's kind of what it's taking just to cruise i'm going to slow down a little bit here and then we'll punch it as if we needed to pass somebody it's in ev mode now all right back up oh, it's still an ev there we go so we'll give it some gas it's full throttle and it has simulated shift points it certainly isn't a fast vehicle it doesn't accelerate really quickly at highway speeds if you need to pass and get around someone make sure you plan for it because it's not just gonna jump out and go but it's not terrible either you know and even after flooring it still getting over 30 miles per gallon and it's definitely designed for efficiency much more so than power and speed. The ride is well damped, well maintained. It doesn't bounce around or anything, you know, independent suspension. It's not going to have side to side kicks or any of that stuff. It pretty smooth overall. There's another big bump here coming up, but the ones I've hit earlier, you know, expansion joints that are quite large or whatever. Um, been no problem this morning in this thing so yeah, in my opinion has quite a nice ride for how nimble it is it's not stiff you would expect it to be a little stiffer based on how well this thing kind of handles and corners and there is the all-wheel drive torque distribution and full throttle you can see it's doing much more on the front it does a little bit of all-wheel drive but it's definitely doing more all-wheel drive than I would have expected for you know something so focused on fuel mileage it's in uh, economy mode as well right now so I wonder if we switch this over to sport mode <laughs> Jeez, I already felt it accelerate a little bit um, we're gonna go ahead and move slow down a little something behind me and then we'll accelerate up got to higher RPM a little bit faster. I don't know. Didn't feel much faster than an economy mode for full throttle, which is how it should be. When you go full throttle, no matter what mode you're in, it should just give you as much power as you can. But economy mode is a, for me, I like driving in economy mode, especially with passengers, because it smooths out the ride quite a bit uh, as far as accelerating and go so the throttle is damped quite a bit makes it much less sensitive and so when you're leaving from a stop and whatever it makes the transition from stopped to 
rolling much smoother. So that's one reason why I like economy mode and some other vehicles I don't like it nearly as much. Um, and this one obviously it's actually doing quite well but if you're in sport mode it's going to keep us at speed much better because it sits a little bit higher in the RPM range on the gas engine to begin with so it keeps you up higher in the power band but I haven't really had issues cruising with this thing on the freeway. All right, you can see here, you have a drive mode and then there's a B. The B is for regenerative braking. So if you use the paddle shifters and hit the minus and plus, so if I hit the plus, it goes down. So when I let off the gas, over here you can see how much regenerative braking there is. But as I hit the, the uh, paddle to downshift, it, it, what it would be normally a downshift, it increases the amount of regenerative braking that's done. Kind of a cool system, I like that. Uh, I've driven around a bit in that mode and you still have the different drive modes when you're in this manual regenerative braking mode. It just adjusts how aggressive that is. All right, here's the window sticker. 2023 Honda CRV hybrid all-wheel drive sport touring Canyon River Blue with black interior. Two liter direct injection, four cylinder engine, CVT transmission, all wheel drive, four wheel disc brakes, a uh, bunch of electric power assist, power steering, I mean, and predictive ECO assist system. Anyway, lots of different standard features on this thing and no options at all. So, base price for this thing, 38,600. Add in 12.45 for the destination, brings you to 39.845. And it was made Final assembly was in Canada, engine, USA, transmission, Japan. 20% of the parts are from Japan, 55% are from US and Canada. And I'm trying to think if there was anything else on there. Anyway, back over here to fuel mileage. I'm not quite that good. I'm closer to the 30 range, and that's combined. So this one combined should be 37, 40 city, 34 highway. I'm definitely not getting quite as good as that, but if I were to not idle, actually, I haven't even been idling that much. It's been warm, so I haven't had to warm up the vehicle or anything, so I'm not sure that I would be in my normal driving if I would reach this 37 combined. Most vehicles, I do a little better than the combined rating, but in this one, I'm definitely not getting that. Thank you for watching Engine Adventures review of this 2023 Honda CRV hybrid sport touring all wheel drive. Really not a bad vehicle at all. It's a nice, I mean, there's a reason it's number two in sales, which is a lot of sales. This is the most popular segment, vehicle segment in the USA. I believe there are more of these vehicles in this class than there are. Um, available vehicles in other classes i don't know if that makes sense anyway it's uh a big seller and it's a great vehicle should be quite reliable the hybrid systems i'm still not 100 percent convinced on their reliability for long-term use but they seem to be doing quite well in many applications now so with the base two liter non-turbo engine in there that should be reliable last forever and then of course uh, it's nice having the extra power boost from the hybrid get you up and going if you liked what you saw be sure to hit subscribe ring the bell when so you get notifications when we post new videos and give me a thumbs up then also comment down below let me know what you liked what you didn't like what you want to see just your thoughts feelings on it whatever and if you didn't like it do all the same stuff but be sure and comment and let me know what you didn't like and have a great day